right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Lost Review. I am here with my friend Dave. Dave, how are you doing today? I am doing great. I always love talking Lost with you. You know, last week we got to talk about the Quads, and this week it's another one of my favorite characters, Hugo Hurley Reyes. Love it. Yes. So this is episode 18, guys, Numbers. So we will be right back. So remember, guys, please, we are on our journey to a 1,000 subscribers, so please hit that like and subscribe button and notification bell for me, guys. And also go check out the Benverse and the Multiverse of Geekdom on Facebook. All right, Dave. So welcome back. We are talking about Episode 18, Season 1, Numbers. We finally get a little bit of uh, information on what these numbers could be. Mm -hmm. What do we think, man? Where, Where are we at so far? I I remember watching this episode the first first time being so mad when we got to like even though these are good episodes where Jack and Kate and Sawyer and kind of the Quans and Charlie they all got two episodes and I was like but where's my Hurley flashback? <laughs> Where is it? And then getting to this uh episode and getting his uh string of bad luck and then his relationship with with the numbers kind of revealed in this episode and the introduction of the numbers really yeah yeah is so fantastic and i'm not is the numbers a thing that really pays off in the grand scheme of lost maybe not really but i have fun with it no not really yeah Oh, it's a fun, uh, it's definitely a fun plot line, or I guess it would be a MacGuffin that keeps, you know, us moving through really the next season, uh, half, rest of this season and the next season, or most of next season, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, and then obviously the numbers are going to relate to the candidates eventually. Um, sure. Sure. But I, the numbers, and the numbers do play a bigger part in uh, the lost ARG, but. You know, we that's not canon and I don't know a lot about that. But well, one day I'll look one day I'll do some research. I did enough research on the a- ARG for uh this and I'm like, oh, I'm not interested in this. But what about you? What do you think about uh getting into this episode? Yeah, well I mean I've I've said it a bunch of times. Hurley's been my fa- he's always been my favorite character since pretty much the first time I watched it. Um so yeah, get, getting to see this the weird thing about this episode that I noticed, which we will obviously get into when it happens, but if we don't, if you don't know what's happening, or you know, you don't know the rest of of the the show itself, him going back to a mental hospital <laughs> to figure out what the numbers are about is a little kind of a like, um, yeah, we're gonna bring this up and never talk about it again kind of thing at the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in the middle of the episode, you're just like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hurley was in the, a mental hospital, and and then they, they just keep uh, okay. <laughs> I can tell <laughs> you exactly how I. Just... I can tell you exactly <laughs> how I felt about it, and how weird it was for me. The Hurley going to Santa Rosa or going back to Santa Rosa. I remember yeah. specifically. I oh, I've told the story a million times about how my older sister, in preparation for the final season of Lost shoved all the dvds in my face and was like you're gonna watch lost because i'm not at college anymore and nobody else is nobody else in this house is gonna watch lost i was like sure i fell in love and i remember after this episode being so confused by the whole santa rosa ordeal because when he comes in and talks to dr dr brooks i believe is the name of that of his main therapist and he treats him as if he's a he graduated from high school and he's come, went away to college. And he's back to visit, and I'm like, yes. "Was Hurley a doctor? I don't think he was a doctor, but right. then, like he clearly knows Lenny. Like, what? I remember going to my sister and being like, "You told me you're not going to spoil stuff. I need to know what was going on with 
uh, Hurley. It was just so out of whack for me. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, knowing the show, you know, but mm -hmm. it's just such a weird thing in this episode when you're trying to tell a story. You just, that's kind of a huge thing to mention about a character that just be like, yeah, we're just going to skip by that now. <laughs> that's... I think on second reflection, I think they actually do a really, this episode is so strong and it's so strong for a number of reasons. One of them is like the subtle storytelling they do where when Hurley's given the TV interview, where unfortunately where's grandpa tito just dies from. i yeah, can no. never watch that scene without laughing i know it's not supposed to be funny but for me i think i just laugh in uncomfortable situations and i just i laugh that whole scene oh his um, reaction's hilarious because he doesn't like, really huh? react he's just like grandpa <laughs> <laughs> uh but in that scene uh he talks about uh i put my family through a lot recent recently and we know and then also at the beginning of the episode, he has the scene where he's like, mom, if you want me living here. So it seems like it's more her being like, no, you need to come live with me. And then being put in a hard through a hard time, you can kind of connect the dots a little bit on second reflection. But I agree with you uh, on first view. It is one of those things like, wait, Hurtley was in a mental institution, but it's not like shoved down your throat like some of the other like big reveals uh that happened in the episode or in the series sorry yeah no again like i said it's just something i noticed thinking like if you don't know what the heck is going on after this you're just lost from literally like, you're like what is hat why was he in an why was he there what was going on so yeah but it also adds to so in the sense that it gives you at least that seed that maybe he is crazy mm-hmm or, you know, that we don't know. We don't know yet yeah. what is actually happening. You know, but it gives you that other option that, okay, maybe there is something there that we don't know about, you know, in, mentally or something. So I agree with that. And I think the fact that we never – the show will never sit down and say, Hurley is diagnosed with this, which I think is a really smart right. thing that they do because I feel like his more he, – he more has uh, emotional – uh, distress more than uh, men than mental delay yeah delays. I'm trying to look th this episode as someone who works in the mental health field by the way sure really a, a terrible light in my on my industry I would <laughs> Just, imagine yeah I, I mean that's that's the stereotypical <laughs> that was 2004 movie. I guess we didn't talk about mental health yet but like <laughs> geez it is not a oh, good yeah. look it's always people standing in a corner or playing with those little things and just, you know, it, yeah, it's, that's it's such a horrible depiction. Of course. Yeah. Obviously. I, I do love, it's a very accurate depiction though. Like, uh, of unfortunately how mental health health was treated, treated then since we are talking about, sure. uh, just there, I want to stick on Santa Rosa for a second. So we, in this episode, we get the obvious, uh, how did Hurley get to Australia? It's by Lenny Yellen. Australia as he gets taken away. But my yeah. favorite part of that is that guy is a terrible actor. Um because yeah. right after right after that he's like Australia. Ooh ah ooh. because like the guy's taking them away and I always notice it. It's like the guy they're wow. not beating you up, they're just taking you away. <laughs> and like see becomes I mean, so it's lucid. To play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that is, I did notice that too, actually. Now that you said, I didn't notice that specifically, but I noticed the, how he was, like in the beginning, supposed to be almost like catatonic, you know, or mm -hmm. I guess that's not ca technically catatonic, but he was in a, a, a one state like a, at that, yeah, a, a, like a frozen state, just repeating the numbers, mm -hmm. and then he just becomes lucid as soon as he says the lot. I used them for the lottery. And he's completely able to have like a normal conversation. <laughs> I was like, that's a little weird. You would think somebody that, even if he's faking it to an extent, if he had literally just been repeating numbers for the last however many years, he would still not be able to just say words normally, right? Like, that would still be no. something. <laughs> that, that would, would still be something. Again. Yeah. It... <laughs> to an extent, at least. <laughs> that Lenny's never my favorite char character, but, like... <laughs> That whole sequence, I love. I love going to Santa Rosa. I think it shows a really interesting side of Hurley, and obviously we'll get more into that in uh, future episodes. 
Uh, but yeah. I do like that, even though even if it's not the greatest depiction of an industry that I've put too much of my life into. Um, yeah. yeah. So you were talking about how Hurley, uh, your, one of your favorite characters, is her, Hurley is your favorite character in Lost? He's, no, he's he's yeah, he's my favorite character. Yeah. I think that's awesome because I think too many times when people talk about uh, who's your favorite character in Lost, Hurley doesn't get brought up, and I think it's because. It's just such an obvious thing to say. It's like, well, obviously it's Hurley. Oh, sure. So then you go down down the line. Or then you get like some of the more actiony guys like Desmond or my favorite Saeed or Sawyer because he's quippy. Uh mm-hmm. get uh some get a lot more love. But it's great to hear that hear you say that Hurley is your favorite character. Uh would you be interested in knowing uh some behind the scenes stuff as to how uh Jorge Garcia ended up getting this part? And also, uh, <clears throat> and also, uh, what their original intentions f- were for Hurley before the uh, pilot. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know. No, no, I don't. I, don't yeah. the, I, I was going to say that I don't know how he's not a star, or at least in, in a lot more stuff, man, because he he really is a funny, really funny guy, and he he. he I think he just got. It's one of those things where like. With the exception of Evangeline Lilly, are any of them, are any of the core Losties, like, big, big stars? I would say, like, Naveed Andrews is in a lot of TV shows. a few things lately, yeah. Um, Even Sawyer was in a couple shows for a while there. But he was in a lot of failed shows and, like, just couldn't get a break because... And I think... Yeah. uh, I think part of the issue, and that was, it all happened in... They filmed like ninety percent of Lost in Hawaii, right? Yeah. So it wasn't right. in LA. They weren't making the connections with people and stuff. And then Jorge Garcia, he's he's not your typical leading man, I think. Mm-hmm. But he ends up showing up in a lot of those shows, like uh, Hawaii Five O and yep. other show, shows like that with obvious Daniel Day Kim and uh, Terry O'Quinn. Oh. oh. I don't say those two two actors, Jin and Locke, uh, they show up in all those shows as well before uh, other thing, things went on. But yeah, he was, uh, but yeah, he definitely needs to be a bigger star. And uh, our good yeah. our good friend Ben, uh, him breaking me on the last episode of this we did did with him, uh, saying that he and Charlie would make the perfect Timon and Pumbaa. I'm like, that, yeah. Where wow, Seth Rogen is stealing this guy's role. For sure, for sure. No, I agree. Um, but Jorge, <laughs> so Jorge Garcia uh, originally came in to read for the part of uh, Sawyer after they saw him on an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where he played a drug dealer. They were like, "This guy's funny. Go get him. We need him for uh, to be quippy and to be whatever. Like he's gonna be great." And originally, the character of Hurley didn't exist. Uh, people say that Hurley ended up getting written for uh, Jorge Garcia, but I think that's been just dis- been disputed. But he came in, played for Sawyer. They decided to go with Josh Holloway instead, and then they're like, "But what about this guy?" And they give show Hurley, and then obviously freaking crushes it. But originally, when he came in as Hurley, Hurley wasn't this uh, deep lottery. He wasn't this like tragic lottery man who was like super depressed. Uh, who had, like, the worst luck in the world and was, like, kind of depressed but coping with it through comedy. Okay. He was a repo man who's, like, m- whose superpower, essentially, was his ability to talk people out of it, anything. He was, like, a wheeling and dealing slimy guy who was just, like, he was in Australia to repossess uh, some billionaire's uh, yacht, essentially. Essentially, huh? Um, and then that was okay. his, he wasn't supposed to be this like good fun time Hurley as he calls himself. He was supposed to be like a total sleaze ball, uh, more like u- more used car salesman and sure. less uh, less funny guy. But okay. they get but then they get Jorge Garcia. They're like this guy's funny. We love him. Let's ab- abandon that. And then by the time of the pilot, they had not yet decided what anything had happened in Hurley's backstory was. 
they were like, ah, uh, he's like maybe like a. And Damon Lindelof tells a story about like how they're on set and he, they're looking at Hurley and be like, I just don't buy that he killed a guy. Like that can't be <laughs> his tragic thing, right? Look at him. He's too. Hurley didn't kill anyone. We can't say that he's right. a murderer off screen. And then he apparently around the time of like the Christmas break, around the time that uh, Damon Lindelof goes for the his walkabout uh, and leaves the show, <laughs> yeah. um, he was re he read a book about how lottery winners are really depressed and like their heights of uh, chance of suicide are like sixty percent higher than any uh, normal population. And I'll he came that. to he came came back to set and was like, he won the lottery, the numbers were cursed, he is, everything bad has happened to him for his entire life. Huh. And that's why it takes until episode 18 to get him a flashback episode, because they literally did not know what his backstory was. Okay, okay. Um, and then obviously, the idea of the numbers, uh, being cursed they hadn't picked what number numbers yet but they would have actually come up with that by pulling numbers that had already existed in the show and making them the lottery winners so like four john Locke spends four years in a wheelchair uh eight and 15 are uh you put eight and 15 together it's flight oceanic eight a 15 and right. so on they got to uh 23 was Kate was going to get turned in for $23,000. Uh, right, right, right. Okay. And then they got all the way and they're like, we need one more number. And uh, the writer, I forget who was, uh, David Fury, uh, who's a prolific lost writer. He's going to come up a lot. Was like, you know what I really like? I love Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So they just put 42 that answered all of life's mysteries in as yes, the last yes, number. Yes. That's oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. I never even put that together, but yeah, I love that movie. That's a great. Oh, that's a good reference too. Especially I think for the show that fits perfectly. It really does. Uh, I think yeah. since Damon has also said that it relates to some baseball player that he likes, but I be I choose to believe the Hitchhiker's oh, Guide Willie to the Mays. Galaxy. Uh, mm. uh, not Willie Mays, uh, Jackie Robinson. Mm. Okay. I'm Canadian. We don't, you know, That's we fair. don't. Fair enough. Fair enough. If, if they weren't a Blue Jay, I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so, yes. Yeah. That's that's fun to know, though. So he came in for Sawyer originally. Yeah, he because they were like, uh, he played a convincing drug dealer in Curb Your Enthusiasm, but obviously that's a funny show. So he well, was yeah. he was making jokes and stuff in the episode, and they specifically he wasn't someone who came into the massive cast audition. They were like, you, you're gonna be Sawyer, um, and then they got him, and they were like, ah, but Josh Holloway is so hot. No. <laughs> just look funny. at those eyes um well just, um so yeah he did that and then they're like don't worry we got something for you and i think hurley the character of hurley was supposed to be like boon level important but then once they got oh, jorge okay. garcia they were like nah elevate this character this is our guy sure no, it makes sense, man. I mean, he again. I, I'm really surprised he's not in a, lot, in a lot more things because the dude is really super funny, and he's and he's lovable. He's 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 charismatic. You want to you want to watch him. You want to see what what he's saying and what he's doing. So I, I, I just think he's great. He he really is, and I hope in because we live in a world where nothing is ever over. So mm -hmm. in the world where we get the lost sequel. I really hope he's involved as, like... Oh, sure. Like, obviously, more than the Jake. I'd love him to be, like, the Richard. But, like, like that level of being involved where, like, he's in the camp okay. doing stuff. But, like, obviously, he's the Jacob. He's in charge. Sure, no, I got you. Yeah. That would be... That would be awesome. Yeah, I would love to see if they did that. 
bring him back for sure. Yeah, uh, I think. Well, I think you'd have to if you, if, if especially if it was a sequel, you'd have to bring him back in some way at least. Yeah. For sure, and for I, sure, yeah. yeah. Eventually, we'll get lost too. Um, but we're still a little bit yeah. uh, away from that, I think. Uh, where where do you want to go f- go from here? We've talked about the we've talked about the numbers. Uh, do you want to yeah, get yeah. into like what the numbers are, or do you want to get in uh, uh, the actual episode? I yes, no, I would love to know what the numbers actually are because okay. I that's one thing that I've sort of been confused on. Even after I've watched the show a few times, all the way through. So, full disclaimer: I am not an expert on this uh, particular topic, and <laughs> the. It's okay. We'll, as we'll of yesterday, I had seven pages of notes for this episode. Uh, th- I don't have all those notes anymore. You know, s- make sure auto save is enabled, kids. Uh, but uh, essentially, the numbers go through a couple uh, variations and the first okay. variation has a lot to do with the lost ARG so the augmented uh, reality game the thing where like you'd go to specific websites and uh, find secret clues to like the Hanzo Foundation and uh, the Dharma Initiative and what's really going on on in Lost and like that stuff you do in the real world. I'm even less versed on the ARGs. You're not asking me any follow-up questions. Um, That's fair. That's fair. Uh, but anyway, so part of that was the company, the Hanzo Foundation is obviously one of the backers for the Dar- Dharma Initiative. Right, and right. one of their uh, things that they were really looking into was something called the Valenzetti equa- equation, which is the um, the equation itself. I don't know because it's like one of those things that you need like seven chalkboards for. <clears throat> but is an equation to determine the exact amount of years that it will take before human extinction. Uh, so you would plug in a set amount of integers. So in this case, 4, 8, 15, uh, tw- 16, 23, 42. You put okay. those in and it would equal five years until uh, all humans die. Just okay. based on those factors or whatever it was. And the original purpose of the Dharma Initiative, which is again disputed, this is more ARG stuff, but not. it's never in the show proper, so I don't fully believe it, was they went to the island in an attempt to change the numbers, to change but how, many, how long it would take to let the... Uh, before humans extinct themselves, essentially. So okay. Okay. changing that four into a five somehow through technological advancements and blah, 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 or changing that. And so that we would have longer to live on earth before human extinction. Sure. Okay. Um, so that was what the numbers were, where they would, those would be, it's not the years. It's not like 4 billion, 800 million, million, 50, 600,000 and stuff like that. Okay. Um, it's, those are the numbers that you would plug into the equation in order to get the result. I don't remember what the result exactly was because I'm not a mathematician, uh, but that was that's the gist of it. Eventually, once I think Damon and Carlton and JJ kind of decide, yeah, we're, we're not going to really lean into this Valenzetti thing. We're not going to lean into the math of this is when humans will be extinct and they more go for a philosophical ending about light versus darkness and every, everything sure then sure. the numbers get changed to jacob has a bunch of candidates here are and each one of the main numbers equate equate to them and then through time travel shenanigans and because of the island's unique property those numbers have infected other parts of the world because of their importance and relevance to those uh, characters Okay, so because I definitely the- got none of that out of watching the show ever. <laughs> <laughs> none of it. Like I, I mean, the I, numbers, I, I did figure it was something with Jacob 
and I thought it had to do with the, the, the game or the, the rocks that they played with. I thought maybe it had something to do with that. Well, the game is a metaphor. These numbers through that way. Sure. The, uh, like, well, again, to find the candidate, like that's <laughs> like you said, that's how they <laughs> that's how they get the, the numbers for the candidates. I that they came across, like you know what I mean. That's yeah. That's kind of I think where I put it together, or at least how I thought of it in my head. I've always thought of it's kind of a it's kind of a, an aborist and stuff where the snake's eating its own tail. Where because Jacob made these people the numbers, uh, he assigned value to those those numbers because but they always had value value to him because they had it because of again the time travel wibbly wombly timey wimeyness that Lost yeah, right. gets into, which you know we are still far away from. Um, yeah, that's when that's when you're 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 gonna be needed the most too. Because, I'm gonna have some whiteboards man. for that stuff. Yeah, um, there's it, some crazy stuff that happens in the future for sure. <laughs> and there there is some crazy stuff that happens happens now too. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Absolutely. Do you wanna do you wanna just stick with the flashback and then we can talk about uh on island? That's fine, yeah. Absolutely. Stuff? Yeah. Uh I so did you notice a couple thi- things? Uh okay. when Hurley first scene hurley's eating the fried chicken pass uh talking to his mom and his mom says uh asks hurley if he's watching a specific show show again uh yeah the uh, the g-string moharas or whatever yeah g-string something yeah yeah now i don't think that's the actual name of the show i firmly believe that she is referring to expose because we know how much of a fan Hurley is of that show where in season three, when he finds the script for it, he's like got like a level onto like my, my or your star Wars uh, fandom with this where he's like, Oh, Billy D Williams was the Cobra all along. Oh my God. So I liked it. And that is a show about strippers. So I like to think that Hurley is telling uh, Hurley's mom is saying, "Stop watching Expose. That show sucks." Okay. See, I put it because the first thing we see on the TV is that workout thing with like the the girls in the like eighties like jump like uh, oh yeah like, workout suits. I thought that's what she was talking about. So that's funny. You, that's you probably that, what that's they're talking funny. about. <laughs> oh, okay, I was gonna say I, that's just kind of how I thought because as soon as she said that, he started flipping through the channels and he's like, "No, I'm watching. I'm looking for something else." <laughs> so it was just, I, that's just kind of how I thought it was. Which Hurley, not a guy who reads the paper, has a lottery ticket and he's not watching the lotto draw. That's kind of crazy. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which again, uh, that was the woman that Sawyer was hooking up with in the last episode. The one that announces the numbers, right? You said yep. that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember and the saying that. and the male uh, newscaster in there, uh, another famous uh, lost lost person. Do you do you know who that is? I, I didn't catch it. Now. I didn't. Car- catch him. Uh, you wouldn't know his voice. It's uh, Carlton Cuse, one of like the showrunners of there. Is the one who goes, yeah, that's right. It's going to be a record breaking jackpot. Okay. Okay. He's the male. He is the male announcer. He'll show up a lot as like the voice of someone off screen. Uh, okay. I think so because I remember, he's. Not- I remember them talking about something. It hasn't been hit in like fifteen weeks or thirteen weeks. What was it? Oh, I didn't. I didn't write that that down. It was okay. Actually, it, very specifically, it was not one of the numbers, which I thought was weird. That yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I. I love that, and then he passes it, passes out. Fantastic way to open, open up the flashbacks. Then we get the, yeah. I also love the press conference uh, with his brother Diego. I will say this too. I think this up to this point, I think this is the best uh, flow from uh, flashbacks into what's happening in the actual story on Island. So far, at least. Because the stories actually do connect a lot. And in the sense that he's 
still looking for the numbers and the, and the explanation for these numbers. It's almost a continuation of that story that in the flashbacks. Yeah, yeah, I I could definitely see see that. Uh, I think uh, something like walkabout. I think uh, thematically probably fits more. Uh, sure. But you you are not wrong. It is kind of like this long quest that he goes on all the way from yeah uh, the winning the money to. Hugging Danielle, which I love that hug that he gives Danielle at the end of the episode. Be like, I'm not crazy. Yeah, no, I was going to bring that up because in that moment, he, again, I, back to just him as an actor, man, he's just really good. He, he can play any anything really, really well. That monologue he has about uh, good old fun time, time Hurley. Well, I'm not yeah. fun anymore. I'm pissed off. And I want some freaking answers. I'm like, oh, it's a great big. Moment. Also, like, I feel like most people who do what we do, not that doing what we do is like this massive thing anymore. Any idiot with a webcam <laughs> can do it. See us. Um, I but have one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I feel like a lot of us flocked to this kind of environment because of our like we are those people in a lot of groups where we're the people that are there for a good time with our friends and like maybe don't get oh, taken sure. as seri- seriously when like real pathos has has to happen as it does as it does in life. So when Hurley's given that speech about like no one's taking me seriously and a really great line about like I don't know what that thing in the mo- I don't know if it's a monster or a polar bear or a pissed off giraffe. <laughs> yeah, it is a funny line. Yes. Um I oh, yeah, that's great. Uh big just like very seen, felt very seen in that, in that uh, monologue with Hurley. I'm like, oh yeah, I get that. That's me. Yeah. Oh, um, he's always, oh, he's definitely supposed to be us. You know that type of person for sure. And then the the I believe you from Rousseau, oh, like so powerful because then he is just in the from. She is also someone who like Hurley, is has a lot of pain and has been labeled as a certain way. Now, in Danielle's case, maybe not so unfairly, as she is legitimately an insane French woman in the jungle. Right. But, but uh... Right. But, you know, people not aren't taking her seriously. And person to agree with you. <laughs> no, <the> no. <laughs> if I, you know, if I needed to pick one person to agree with me, I'm gonna hope it's Saeed, not Danielle. Right. right. <laughs> um... But really he gets fantastic. what he needs out of it, which is bad. Which does is what matters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, some other great moments from the flashback. Uh, okay. I love every time anyone talks to Hurley about about the curse and how it's just no one has the same reaction, but everyone is like, ah, there's no such thing as curses. Like the accountant saying. I don't believe in curses. I believe in numbers. And there's numbers. this fa- look on Hurley's face. Like, That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's the numbers. Um, mm-hmm. His mother saying, uh, we're Catholic. We don't believe in curses. I think mm-hmm. it's fantastic. And then, uh, oh, what is Sam Toomey's wife's name? Uh, Martha. <sighs> First of all, maybe the word where she's like, cursed? You don't think the houses would have burned and people would have died if you hadn't taken the jelly beans and counted with the numbers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, maybe the worst Australian accent in all of us. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't, I'll admit that. Which I was kind of wondering how he served. I mean, again, I, I get it. People can serve, you know, if they come here. But it, why? I don't know why they went back. What, what's that story? Uh, it's just a weird... Because well, he served in the U.S. Navy and then he went back to Australia, I guess, afterwards. Well, a lot of people in... A lot of people who were in, like, the pacific campaign ended up staying just on that side of the world afterwards and i know that's more like oh that's fair okay and like we don't know exactly where he was stationed uh um and i know listening listening posts were more frequent in uh europe than they were in asia but th- he could have been on the uh on the eastern front uh, in the Pacific campaign, and right. then you know he got got injured, got shipped to Australia or something like that. Met Martha Toomey, they fell in love, 
That's he took true. her last name, I guess, yeah. in this in this thing. Why not? Why yeah. Not? Uh. Yeah, no, I, that that makes sense. I mean, maybe he. I mean, we don't know. He might be American. That he just maybe he just went there for a vacation and met her. Yeah, and stayed. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, actually, Sam. So he heard about the numbers. I have. Uh, I also have fandom uh, open just so I can okay. read through some stuff. So he heard about the numbers sixteen years ago, right? And. S- 16 years ago from 2004 is 1988, right? Right. So, like, that's post... That's post-Cold War, but, like, there's some, like, Russian yeah. intelligence stuff still happening at that that point. So, I, if it's not the Second World, World War, it actually makes a lot more sense that he is just... He was stationed in Australia, and that's how he yeah. found, found the numbers. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay, that I, was, I, I, I kind of was putting it together in a different way in my head, I think, and actually now saying it out loud makes a lot more sense. So. Well, generally, until I saw 16 years, and I don't know how old I guess I thought they were, but I was like, yeah, it was World War II. But I'm like, I guess that he would have been like yeah. nine. How old's Leonard? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right. so. I was going to say, she didn't look that old, yeah. So, no, yeah, no, she, she, right. Great skin care uh, routine. <laughs> right, right. I do have a question then, though, because this is a weird thing. So, if the island is just, why is the, I'm just spouting these numbers out over and over again? Like that's, I guess, the weird, the one weird thing. Well, that was part of the Dharma Initiative. They had, they were broadcasting the numbers as part of their experiments to change the numbers. I think the... Okay, see, I missed that then somewhere. Okay, gotcha. Well, no, this is something that's not in the show. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I was like, wait a second. I, I don't remember that for sure. I no, this is an AR... Uh, we know that the... When Danielle turns off... Danielle goes to the radio tower, starts playing her message. Right. She turns off a message that is just doing the numbers. So... Okay. I believe... And again, I'm not an expert on this field, and it's been a while. It's been four days since I've really dove into all of this stuff. <laughs> so, um, essentially, they had like a computer, or whatever, or an adding machine, or whatever it was at the time, uh, okay. constantly running the Valizetti equation with the number, and then it would broadcast the numbers that it had inputted. And to get to the result. And if their experiments ever did anything that would actually imp- uh, influence the uh, what the numbers would be, the computer would automatically change and then the broadcasting number signal would change. Okay. So that's why okay. they're constantly broadcasting it to like as kind of like a like a proof thing where they're like trying to figure out did it work? Okay. I'll say that the only where, and maybe you could, you know, maybe I'm just not looking at it the right way. The only where that breaks down, at least in my mind, is that they're not trying, they don't want to be found, right? On the island. So why would they be broadcasting and possibly chancing like a Russo situation where a well, random uh, boat finds the island? I don't think that they're doing anything. I actually don't think they don't want to be found. Uh, in terms of like the Dharma initiative, because at that point, by the time the others have purged the the DI, I think that happens in like nineteen ninety six or something like that. Nineteen ninety eight, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it's like mid nineties that the purge happens with the di and before that like they have like open communication with the mainland and stuff uh well right i understand that but they were still knocking people out to bring them to the island before that right i think mm, i don't hmm. i think that that was just like a traveling to and from the island thing gets weird like okay right right, because you go uh, to the barrier yeah, you go through like whatever that magic fog is, right? And those narrow little the one uh, coordinate, heading, 
the one coordinate that goes through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think it's that. more. Okay. I think that's more it, and I also don't know if we ever see anyone from the DI getting knocked out because we don't get a lot of time with them on the sub. But like we know they're bringing okay. children, like Ben oh, yeah. and stuff like that, uh, to the island. So. I can't imagine yeah, I guess that they're actually probably would have started out. after like takeover. I think you're right. That probably would have started after the takeover. Yeah, but then because like when the... we see the incoming in the in the flashbacks when we go back in time, it doesn't really seem like they've been drugged or anything when they're getting off. no. So it, I think it probably was different back then. <sighs> yeah, if we're assume. getting like into season five stuff where now yeah, that I'm yeah, thinking about it. Now that I'm thinking about it more, I do think they do drug people because I think there's a oh, okay. line where Sawyer is trying to sneak Kate Hurley and Jack in. They're like, ah, just act weird. The drugs are just wearing off. And it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, but anyway, we don't need to worry about that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I was just, it was just a little thing I was wondering. We are like 60 episodes away from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely that. Uh, <laughs> Other uh, great shout out to uh, shout out to the song that Hurley is listening to in his yellow Hummer. Uh, yes. Everybody with me drinks on me. Hey y'all, who you come with? Who you leaving with? It's my line. Everybody with me. Hey y'all, who you came with? Who you leaving with? Yeah. Just... Better lyrical uh, poetry has not been spoken, I think. And honestly, if I was Michael Giacchino, who he says that uh, Michael Giacchino also says that, or Giacchino, whatever his name is, says that uh, Hurley is his favorite character to write music for. And that's why Hurley gets like three different themes in this episode. But anyway, it's kind of embarrassing that he came back to work after that was in the episode because like he just got upstaged. By that amazing rap song. Fair enough, fair enough. I love his mom. It's like, turn that noise down. <laughs> <laughs> that exactly. is great. Um, a I shout love out. the mom. I love the woman that plays the mom, too. Oh, She's so good. She's so yeah. funny. Carmen Reyes? Yes. You know, last week we said, is Jin's dad the best dad on Lost? With the exception of throwing your son who was trapped on a uh, on a tropical island, a island themed birthday party yeah. uh, when he gets back. Other than that, I think Carmen <laughs> maybe best mom. Yeah. I think I guess, so, dude. she's so great. Yeah. She's so great. Like in everything she does. I love even the when island themed party it's just she's not she's just doesn't she just thinks it's like you know it's so innocent it's so yeah innocent. you know it's innocent it's so sweet we are <laughs> it's not in dave i think it's in everybody love or no it's uh trisha tanaka is dead the episode where they have to start the van my favorite thing that carmen reyes ever does is when after cheech comes back mm -hmm. she like covers the statue of baby jesus uh, of Jesus' yes. ears is like I, do I have that. needs, Hugo. It was like, oh my god, ma'am, right? Stop. Uh, but yeah, she's she's fantastic, and I love her reaction to like all the bad news, like the priest getting struck by lightning at Tito's funeral, and she just like does the sign of the cross, or when uh, Dio's wife left him for that waitress, and she's like, do not mention that horror to me. And then uh, it's like, I think we're cursed. And then she hits him. And it's like, mm -hmm. we're Catholic. We don't believe in curses. It's like, she's yeah. fantastic. It's like, I don't like surprises. What are you doing? And then her surprise is she uh, almost breaks her ankle. Her house burns down. And her son gets arrested. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I love the face, too. Just a quick moment when he hands her the blindfold. She's just like. <laughs> I think she says something like, uh, is this what you rich people do? <laughs> I think like when Hugo when he gets out to like uh help her out of the car, it's one of those like That's background great. lines. It's like <laughs> that is great. It's like Carmen, does do you think that he's taking you to an eyes wide shut party? Is that what you think's happening right now? 
That's funny. That's a little uh, I just what ha I do actually I don't remember. Do we know what happened with the house? How that started? bad luck, it caught on fire. <laughs> just just bad luck, yeah. Just, yeah. just like the in uh, like the accountant will say, good thing you had uh, insurance. I like and I love that moment actually. There's something you brought up with with the accountant was um, when he's talking about how the factory burned down, and he's just like, and eight eight or something people died. <laughs> he just keeps <laughs> like going, and Harley's like, wait, what? Eight people died. <laughs> Which oh. in that scene, uh, he mentioned that they just acquired a new company. Did you catch which company they had just acquired? It, it's the box company. It's a box and company in Tuscany. Locks yes. Hurley's boss. Yes. No, Which... Hurley's locks boss. <laughs> yeah. What a right? different world that would be. Oh man, I want to see that in a rat. They like have a scene where he just like walks in and announces he's the new boss of the company while Locks is still there. <laughs> that would be great. I think we get something like that in season six in the sideways, but um oh, okay. Yeah, we don't get anything like that in the main timeline, but I would love oh, that. Freaking Randy Nations is just like tearing into John Locke, and then Hurley comes up behind him like, hey, dude, just chill out. I'm here to run a box company. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Uh, uh, I guess we should talk about like some on island stuff, shouldn't we? Sure, because sure. we've been all flashbacks. flashbacks. Is there anything we didn't hit flashbacks yet? I think we hit no, everything, right? Uh, I think we got it all. Uh, okay. I just wanted to make sure that we talked about uh, the rap song because that love <laughs> so it's much. A great, no, it's a great moment too. <laughs> it's just you go hard into the flashback with that music. <laughs> yeah, and it's just I don't know. For me, it doesn't fit Hurley. I don't know. In that moment, it just doesn't fit him that he's listening well, to it either. We, I think it's actually kind of funny. So we don't have time to get into all this, and I would just be badly <laughs> retelling something. Uh, if you want more information on that song. So until a couple years ago, okay. the identity of the person who wrote that song was a mystery. Like, in the real oh, world. Really? Like, nobody knew who it was. People had tried to find... Uh, that song outside of Lost could not find it. So it was a piece of music composed for Lost, and nobody knew where it came from. Oh, okay. I didn't know Until, that. Uh, and it stayed that way for 15 years. Uh, but then in, uh, I've mentioned this podcast a couple times before, Down the Hatch uh, Lost Rewatch podcast. They had a big uh, expert they loved the song, did like, I think, 20 minutes on the song in their numbers episode. And then months later, like, tracked down, were able to track down the guy and had uh, a whole podcast with uh, the Chris the Glove Taylor, who is the performer uh, who wrote the song, who has backstory on the song, who the song, who the artist actually is, and... Who the art artist in the world of Lost is, I should say. Uh, you know? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I no, won't I get... no, I don't know that. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, I will. I would recommend go uh, go seek out that podcast. It's like half an hour. It's called uh, DJ Dom Exposed Party. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, awesome. And finding out who the singer of the song is in the world of Lost is a lot of fun. Anyway, okay. uh, anything on so island? They gave him an actual backstory, or he created it. No, this was the artist saying when I was when I was in the booth uh, doing it. Like this is how I felt. This is what I thought. Okay. And, okay. And this is what I thought. But like, he then like watched the episode uh, and was like, "Yeah." And now I have more backstory for it. It'll never come. Oh One of those God. things that's like, it's just for me. It's just Fair for enough. me. And then fifteen years later two guys pull them out onto a podcast and are like, no, tell us all your secrets. Damn, that's funny. Uh, so on Island, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, 
I know we'll get into the Hurley stuff more, uh, but just as we jump on, I want to talk about like the two kind of subplots going on this episode quickly. Yep. Sure. Yep. I, I love already. We talked about this last week. Michael and Jin seem to be best buddies now. <laughs> like they're working on the raft. They're, yeah, they're their best friends. They're best friends already. Yeah. They're. Uh, I love. I love the, the little fight they're having, and Jin and uh, our Jin, uh, son looks over, and it's just like. Why aren't like I don't know? It's just a moment where you're like, oh, they're not they're not about the fist fight. They're just actually having like a friend. Fight. They're like tie it tighter, tighter. <laughs> I just I love that moment. Uh, I love the little setup there. Also, you get t- uh, two setups in that scene for future storylines. One where Sun and Kate are talking, and Sun's like, he's never coming back to me. And Kate, I, in that moment, yeah. I think Kate gets the idea where it's like, oh, but what if we poison him? Um. <laughs> <laughs> just like that that's my kate thinking voice <laughs> um and then <laughs> oh, yes. um and then we also get sawyer is reading and starting to get a headache which is obviously set up yes. for the much needed comic relief of next week which is uh sure. not as fun of an episode as this one. Next week's very and very intense episode. So we it need is. this no, is, we, yeah. we need the Sawyer needs glasses storyline. Actually I I like that storyline. That's a fun storyline in that episode at least. See, I hated it until I found out the behind the scenes reasons that it exists. And we'll I think get into that. You told me before, but yeah, yeah, no, we'll wait till next week. But I think yeah. you told me that before. Yeah. Um, and then the other storyline is Claire and Locke build a crib, and all I have to say yes. about that is, Claire, you couldn't tell it was a crib because it was upside down. What did you it. think you were building? Yeah, I just thought it was just a bear trap or something like. What did she say? Something like that. Uh, something like that. And then he flips over. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's a bassinet. It's like. At what point, like, I feel like I could identify a bassinet from being upside down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first time she asked, I understand, because it does just look like a stick with a bunch of sticks tied to it. Yeah. But once he's putting it together, and yeah, like you said, even upside down, you would kind of have an idea. Of what it is. And she gets involved in that storyline in, like, the middle of the day. And it's dark when they're done. So they've been at this for hours. Mm-hmm. And just never. And, it, and I'm sorry, it's not that intricate of a bat. And, and again, I mean, it's awesome that he made it in the middle of the woods the way he did. Don't get me wrong; I'm not taking nothing away from it. But it's not like it's super intricate or like. No. If anything, the bad. most impressive thing that happened was he rendered animal fat to make glue. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. And it's the and most amazing part of it. It's moments like that. Did he like use the unicorn? Did he <laughs> use the unicorn? That oh, is the question. That's the question. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I just yeah. That that's all I have to think. Uh, uh, other than like this relationship, obviously in season two is going to be very important. So it's nice to see that they're laying the groundwork now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it's a sweet moment for Locke because there are moments like this with Locke that you get and you're it, it just confuses the heck out of you, man. <laughs> it just confuses the heck out of you. Well, what yeah. is this guy? <laughs> is he a good guy? He's building a bassinet, but then he's... What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. He so. drugged Boone. Remember that? Are we all just going to forget about that? I, I would say he's probably the most like back and forth character so far, right? Uh, maybe Charlie, but that's just like through drug addiction. Well, I he think he never goes like super bad. Like, I mean, Locke, or at least from their point of view, tied them up and uh, tied him. And uh, I mean, yeah, he did a little more than Charlie. Sayed did, did torture anybody. Sawyer. Fair enough. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But we're on Sayed's side of that. One. We are on Sayed's. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, given bit. given the fact that. I'm not on anyone's side, given the fact that well, Sawyer fair. never had the inhalers. No, that's fair. That maybe fair. it's just my Canadian weak-willed sensibilities, but I'm just, I don't think torture works, guys. Well, no, I'm not, again, I'm not condoning it or anything. <laughs> I'm just saying, 
in that moment with what their information is and they think someone's yeah, yeah. dying. That's all I mean. Yeah. <laughs> but also let Shannon die. Like she sucks. Well, that's that's also a fair point. <laughs> she <laughs> self centered rich kid, so um so a couple of uh the way this uh, the whole storyline revolves around Hurley needing to they need to get a battery from Rousseau. And yeah. Hurley's idea is, well, we'll go get it from Rousseau for the transponder. And Zaid, I love, immediately when Hurley and Jack approach him with this idea, he's like, absolutely not. That's yeah, a no, terrible idea. That. She is insane. Oh, and I, I love st- his moment where he just starts, like, ripping up the paper. Not ripping them up, but, like, crumbling them up and, like, I have no idea what this stuff is. The scrawlings no of a mad it's woman. Song, yeah, it's, it's song lyrics and, and nothing. Like, I have no idea. <laughs> There is math. There's <laughs> Finding Nemo lyrics. What is this? <laughs> He's like, look, she's here. If this is what you want to go to dark territory, is that where you want to go? Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this, subtly, this is like a great Saeed episode, actually, because I love when. Uh, Hurley sneaks up on Saeed and say, he's like, are you sleeping, dude? Saeed's like, I was trying to. (laughs) And then later... Sitting there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then later, when after Hurley's left, uh, Saeed runs up on Jack and is like, you're sending Hurley to do your dirty work now? Blah, 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 blah. And then halfway through, he's like, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Yeah. no, No idea. Yeah. Um... No, it I'm, is a good Saeed episode, actually. And that, yeah, you're right. And he gets this picture of Nadia back. Too. Yeah, I noticed that, too, this time. Or, I mean, I probably noticed it before, but I was mm-hmm. like, oh, man. He, and it's only, it's all burnt up. I was really sad for him. Yeah, and I don't know that we ever see the picture again, but, like, he keeps it. Not sure. that one. No, not that no. one, I don't think. Maybe we see it. No, because she's dead, and I guess they'd have other pictures when he's Oceanic Sixing. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, heartbreaking when he finally gets him leaving that photo there was so hard for him. And then to get it back and uh, it be all burnt up, that's stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, I, the little bit he has of it, he's willing to keep it. I mean, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so. I also really do love, uh, just sticking with Saeed through this episode, I love how much Saeed, once he, Jack, and uh, Charlie decide to go after Hurley, how much it is, like, Charlie and Hurley are the kids, and Jack and Saeed are, like, their two dads. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, just stop what you're doing. And, like, Mm -hmm. with the whole landmine situation where, uh, or not landmine, uh, tripwire. Yeah. Where Saeed's trying to tell him, uh, calmly tell him what to do, and Jack's just yelling, Hurley, no! No, Hurley! Don't drop it! No! His line when he's like, "I'm spry," <laughs> I was laughing so hard. That. Me and it's so funny. Me and a friend of mine who's are uh, <clears throat> who he also loves Lost. We will often say to each other, "I can make it. I'm spry." <laughs> Dude, it's it's a great line. It's, a great line. it's uh, so funny. I love so it funny. so much. Just and Charlie, you know what? Charlie takes a few jabs at Hurley in this episode about his weight too. Yeah, I'm not a fan. He As does. A, as a newly fat guy, because, you know, I... <laughs> newly you fat know, Yeah. On, well, I used to be very skinny, and then, you know... Okay, okay. Then the pandemic happened. I've always been a fat guy, I don't know. And I'm fat now, so <laughs> I just wasn't a fan of all the fat shaming bullshit that went on. No, it wasn't. No, I didn't like it. Um, only because I know they're such great friends. And hmm. it, it, it does... And it, I don't think he's, like, you know, mean-intentioned. But it does come off a little bit mean, the way he well, says them. Charlie, similar to Jack, is kind of a dick. Like, that's just one of the things he is. Yeah. Um, actually, speaking of his weight, I do have written down one of my notes. Uh, okay. The first, the first thing Hugo, uh, Carmen's mom, says to him is, uh, stop eating, eating that, you're getting fat again. By this point in filming, due to the arduous film schedule... Uh, Jorge Garcia has lost 35 pounds. Okay. Yeah. So they're making fun of him for being like, look at you, you're a fat guy on the island, where in reality it's like, I've lost 35 pounds since I've been here. Well, it reminds me of when he's taught, when um, Charlie accuses him of stealing food. And mm. he's like, 
like, dude, I'm a big guy. It's going to take a little bit of time before you know. <laughs> like, before I'm ready for swimsuit like, season. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. It's like, you, could, you might not notice right away. Like, yeah, it's going to take some time. Um, But, like, Charlie is kind of a dick, and that never goes away. Even at the end, when Charlie has yeah. that moment where he's like, I was doing drugs, and Hurley's like, I'm worth $180 million back home. Yeah. Or $156 million back home, sorry. Yeah, $156, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, so he owes Walt $86,000. <laughs> right, so that, you got to uh, take that into account. <laughs> we didn't talk about this last week. Okay. Do you think, now that we know Hurley has the money, Yeah. do you think he ever gives Walt the money? Like, they're both off the island. Mm. <laughs> and I wouldn't. I wouldn't Walt... And Walt comes to visit Hurley in Santa Rosa, and Walt will eventually be recruited to come back to the island by Hurley in the epilogue to the show. And if I'm Walt, I'm like, I'm hitting Hurley up for $83,000. That's uh, No, you're not wrong. Yeah, I guess no, because, I mean, him and Hurley are always cool. They, they never have a real issue. It's, it's always Michael that is the reason that Walter is in the positions he's in. I love that you call him Walter. That's like, I, it's so great. I've never heard anyone call him Walter, but you've done it for two episodes now, and I really appreciate it. I think that's a great, like, you guys are friends. You call him Walter. Yeah, he's my best bud. I hang out with him. I'll talk. <laughs> why, why are you hanging out with a nine-year-old? <laughs> right, exactly. What are you doing over there? What's going on? <laughs> um... I do, but Hurley all the way, th- or sorry, back to Charlie being okay. a dick f- through the whole episode uh, yeah. to Hurley. Even when they get separated on opposite sides of the cavern and uh, Charlie's like, ah, what happened? You you broke the thing. It's like, Charlie, you also walked across the rope bridge, okay? Mm-hmm. Just because mm-hmm. the two competent people are on the other side of the, the gorge right now does not mean you get to be mean to Hurley. No, of course, yeah, no, I, yeah, I just don't like the little dig where he's like, well, if he can do it, like, it's an ah. old bridge, you can tell it's going to fall either way, it doesn't matter if a, you know, three, four hundred pound dude stands on it, or, or a one dude stands on it, or a hobbit, at some point it's going to go, <laughs> yeah, at some point <laughs> it's going to go, like, it just, just because he happened to make it across, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's a safe bridge to cross, like, <laughs> at all. It had one side. It was only held up yeah. by Yeah. Right. Come on, Charlie. I also got to say. I don't understand say, how those planks stayed up. Those planks should have been, like. <sighs> so, I've all, so, you know, if you think the candidates can't die, you know, maybe, like, the island is protecting them. But because the, Jacob, Jacob can see. Like yeah. Right below it, Jacob's like, eh, eh. Um. <laughs> But because, you know, Charlie, the bridge breaks when Charlie goes across because Jacob's like, this guy's got like 60 days left in, in him anyway. Like, he's out. That's fair. That's fair. That's um, fair. I do love, by the uh, going back to the spring trap, the tripwire, where Hurley says, I'm okay. spry. Uh, I love Saeed's trying to explain what to do. Jack's telling him, you don't move, you don't move. And Charlie's just yelling, oi, 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 stop, oi, oi. <laughs> uh, this is a very, yeah. pro- is this the funniest episode of season one? Oh, it's hilarious. Oh, it's yeah. definitely funny. Yeah, I, yeah, it's up there for sure because, yeah, there are some really, really funny moments in this. And, and again, I think this, even with the bad episodes that we got, um, in the middle there, the the three where he he disappeared and the writing wasn't as up to par. We love these characters by this point. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like we're invested in what's happening to them, at this, which is <laughs> it's great. It's a, it's 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 a good thing mm-hmm. that they were able to get this much emotion out of you because a lot of the jokes are character moments that are just funny and they and. and and because you like the characters already so much, or you know so much about them, it, it makes the joke work. So, yeah, I do like that. I there's even some great uh, lines that aren't like foreground lines, kind of like uh, the Carmen Reyes thing. And I don't. Yeah. You can probably only see it if you. I watch with subtitles, 
uh, because my wife always watches with subtitles, and now it's I just always have them on. Um, yeah. But when they are first talking about like where to get a battery, and they talk to Saeed about like, oh, what about going to the French chick? Someone says, uh, oh, we could try the cockpit, and then uh, in the subtitles, Jack in the background is, says, I wouldn't do that. It's just like he's thinking back to the pilot, being like, freaking, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, he was in Heroes. He's in all of JJ's stuff. Uh, Greg yes. Grunberg. It's like, Greg yes. Grunberg died for nothing, Jack, because you won't go back to the cockpit. And I don't think they go back to the cockpit, actually, until, like, season four. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I think that's where like the lock camp versus Jack camp happens. I think that happens at right. the cockpit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So much. It's so much. So much. <laughs> uh, kind of going back to some other funny moments from from the episode. I also okay. love after the after Hurley's confronted Rousseau, um, mm-hmm. and after. Jack has exploded Russo's house by accidentally triggering dynamite. Um, yes. Which yes. was an idiot, Jack. I've always held the belief that Jack Shepard kind of an idiot. It's like you just saw a trap. He gets in his way more than anything, yeah. He gets in his N- own way more than anything, yeah. Him and Kate have not gone caught in a net yet, right? That's season two? No, nah, that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, no, that hasn't yeah. happened. Yeah, that's season two then. But I'm like, Jack's gonna get into a lot of traps. And it's like, just learn to look where you're going. But I when Hurley and Charlie eventually come back, I love the line of him being like, Hey, I got the battery. She says hi, dude. And I'm just like, everyone just gives him a look. And mm-hmm. Jack's look especially is like, Oh, that's my boy. It's like it's the same look that like Thor gives to Captain America in Endgame when Cap yep. lifts Mjolnir. It's like, ah yeah, look at my boy go. And this is really uh, mm-hmm. cementing. Hurley is like the people's leader to uh, the people's consigliere. He's like the union rep to Jack's president. For for oh, he has the that, best sure. bedside manner. Kate's like his uh, woman of action. Said's his general, and uh, yeah. And Hurley's a man of the people, and that. That little look that Jack gives, like, yeah, look at my boy. I've always loved that so much. And she yeah, says, hey, okay. just as such a funny little aside to Saeed. It's like, she says, hey. It's like, ah, I know you guys knew each other. And I don't think we see Rousseau again until Exodus. Is that the end? That's the end of the first season, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, which I think was shocking to me because I remember thinking – once she showed up once, she was going to show up all the time. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that is weird because I I feel like now she's like such a big part of the story going forward, at least once they... But yeah, they haven't figured out a few things yet, so it makes sense she doesn't come back till then. Because mm-hmm. we're close, right? How many how many episodes in the first season? Uh, 24, but three of them are exit, or two of them are exit. Wait, three of them are exits. Okay, so we got about what four more or five more episodes? Uh, yeah, we got five. Yeah, we got Deus Ex Machina, which is Boone and Locke find the Beechcraft and Sawyer needs glasses. Okay. Uh, Do no harm, which is uh, Lost does ER, um, because <laughs> that's Aaron's birth and Boone's death. Um, uh, there's the recap episode. But we're not probably not going to watch that. Um. Definitely not going to watch that. Watch watch the Lost the Journey on your own time, you filthy animals. Um, <laughs> the Greater Good, which is the Saeed joins a terrorist, cult, uh, terrorist cell in Australia undercover, and Shannon yeah. wants Shannon wants Saeed to kill Locke. Born to Run is the Cade episode. Where we meet Doctor oh, Arst. This season still? Wow, I forgot. Yeah, that. Well, that's where she like poisons. Uh, yeah. She poisons Jin, and that's like where uh, Locke shows uh, 
Saeed the Hatch finally. And then, yeah, and then Sexist. So I think we got five more episodes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's getting interesting, man. It's getting interesting now. It's getting really interesting. Um, wow. I thought this I was going to be a short one. I did not realize <laughs> we had already been going for an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hour. Yeah. Wow. No, it's all good, man. No, I love. No, I really, I really enjoy all this stuff, man. Especially with the Hugo stuff, because I, like I said, I really like him in the show, and like I said, he is my favorite character. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's because of the actor. I just, I love that guy so much. He's just so, so good, so good. Yeah. Uh, so just a couple like final thing, uh, things to say, uh, to ask okay. you. Sure. Uh, we get two. We get two big confessions in this this episode uh where hurley or uh charlie admits to hurley i was doing heroin when the plane plane went down yeah uh and also hurley not as so well received saying i think i crashed the plane um what were your thoughts on those because i remember leaving this episode very much believing that hurley was the reason the plane crashed oh i think so too yeah Yeah, i think i would have been because yeah at this i mean from what they set up just in this episode alone is that he everything bad is happening around him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, when you're watching a show like this and you feel like they're leading you down a path, then you kind of take it. I mean, and that's kind of how this episode feels is it's leading you to to that path, which I don't know. I don't I just I don't know where I think the connection is. That's where I guess my only thought would be against it is yeah, he's on a plane, but he doesn't know any of these people, so why would why would this really be a tragedy for him in that sense? Because it seems like everything else mm-hmm. happened to people he knew. Uh, well, that one person just killed himself in while Hurley was in a meeting. Jumped out. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. That's um, true. But see, that actually confused me when that happened because I felt like I thought the same thing, or I did feel the same, or thought the same thing when I was watching it this time was. But how is that connected to him? Then? I just don't some random person on another floor. I mean, who cares? I mean, not uh, who yeah. cares? But I, I don't mean it that way. But <laughs> I mean, for, for Hurley's story, it doesn't really affect his story in any way. I, that I can tell. Just that he saw it happen. I I imagine he just is like constantly giving off like a bad luck aura. I see. Okay. okay. Where we we skipped over this because we were laughing about him like uh, seeming like he was coming back to high school. But when he's talking, it's like I want to talk to uh, Leonard, and there's the guy changing the light bulb. Which is like, hey, I would really appreciate it yes. if you were not doing this right now. And so I'm like, Hurley probably saved that guy's life. That's that guy's fair. dead. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think he is just like emanating bad luck constantly, and. Sure. Eventually, we'll re- figure out why the plane did crash, and it wasn't oh sure Hurley's sure. fault, or was it? Da, da, da. Well, exactly, no. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind it all. He fooled Jacob. That's what happened. He fooled Jacob into picking him. He's actually <laughs> he's actually the devil, and he fooled Jacob into picking. Him. Well, he well to be fair, Jacob didn't pick him. Jack picked him. Well, that yeah, no, that's true. That's true. And also, I guess at that point, his choices were Hurley or Ben. <laughs> so Hurley is like the Darth Jar Jar of Lost. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. He no, I refuse. Yeah, so. I refuse yeah, to even entertain that as a as a thought, as a meme. I won't speak it into more <laughs> words. No. No, that's not fair to Hurley. He's too good. He really is too good. Oh, my God. But he has a voice for a Gungan. Let's get him. Let's make him a Gungan and whatever. Is Skeleton oh, Crew still filming? Let's get him in there. He'd be much better than what they went with. Oh, man. It's, it's oh, so he's, hard to he's watch. so happy. It's hard to watch. Uh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And Hurley's a big Star Wars fan, as we'll find out. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. He is one of us. He is one of us. <laughs> Some like it, Hoth. I love that episode so much in season five. But we will get there when we get there. Absolutely. Um, 
Um, yeah, yeah that- and then Charlie, the Charlie thing we sort of knew, though, because that was in the episode uh, with his brother and stuff. But, but uh, what I mean is, outside of Jack, and that's the, like, Jack sussed it out because they were trapped under the rock slide together. I believe mm-hmm. this is the first time that Charlie has told anybody. Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, other than, it's it's only Locke and Jack that know, right? Oh, I completely that's- forgot about Locke. Oh, and you know what? This is a bad question. He also told told Claire right before Ethan took them. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And J- and Jin was there, but he doesn't speak English, so. Yeah, that's yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay. So it is three people that know that. Yeah. You know what? Bad question. My bad. I missed my chance to ask this question during. Uh, what is that? Go ahead. Whatever episode that was. No, no, I'm saying I should have asked this question months oh, oh, ago. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Well, no, yeah, because I was just thinking about it. I was like, because we see him in the bathroom when he hits, you know, he hits his head. and That's in the pilot. Out. Is that in the pilot? Okay. Yeah, that's part of the pilot. Oh, right, because that's when they go to the, the, the cockpit. Yeah, right, right. Immediately, and this is how dumb I was when I was 14, I thought Charlie crashed the plane because he threw his drugs down the toilet. Because I didn't know how airplanes worked. And I was like, he put a thing in the toilet and then crashed the plane. That's it. That's it. That's funny. And my sister let me run with that for so long. Oh, I bet. 14 year olds are. Died? Uh, she was 23. Oh, yeah. Oh, she was having some. Yeah, she was absolutely having some. <laughs> yeah, she was on another one. Yeah. Like I said, she was back from college being like, no one's watching Lost to make my stupid brother. And for end of the first episode, I'm like, I think the drug addict crashed the plane. <laughs> because he put his drugs in the toilet. <laughs> wow, I don't know that I've said that out loud since I was 14. What a moron <laughs> I was. What? No, what actually, is... look, you know, nobody knows. At that moment, nobody a... knows. You, hey. He put a bag in a toilet. I knew how toilets worked. <laughs> well, no, I got gotcha. you. No, it's even oh. worse is how those airplanes or those toilets work. That's even when you find that out. Yeah. Just or dump it over. Used to. Where they would just like dump it over fields in like blue chunks. Yeah. Uh. That's even nastier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's worse. Ugh. Oh, uh, uh I'm trying to think was there anything last else that thing. we didn't get to? Uh nothing yeah. that we didn't get to. Uh, I have a bl- I have uh, okay. some goop. Lost obviously is one of those shows that really needed a digital editor because that just didn't exist yet. Uh, okay. Or like Photoshop needed to happen, and they did a lot of stuff on location or in caves or in cave sets. Uh, mm-hmm. When Jin and uh, uh, Michael are fighting about how tight to make the bamboo, there is. Clear as day, a sailboat in the background. Oh, really? <laughs> it's just back there. <laughs> just like a boat. I definitely didn't notice. Oh, I'm going to have to go back now because I definitely want to see that. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things that uh, it will look just like part of the waves. But the moment you see it, it's all you can see in the scene. Kind of like how in, uh, I think, Greatest Hits in Season 3... There's a really emotional scene where Hurley is running to give Charlie a hug before he leaves forever. And right in the corner for like half of the shot is a cameraman squatting down going like this. And you never notice it until you notice it. And then it's wow. all you can see. That's great. And Lost does that all the time where constantly you'll see like an airplane flying over over top or something. Um. So that's just that's just something fun. I like pointing out the little continuity gaffes because I think those are fun and really a relic of the time. But then again, I guess oh, Starbucks yeah, yeah. cup still happens. So, All right. yep, yep. Have you seen? I I love the the how they outed each other about that too. It's so funny. yeah. If you watch that, it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I know. I really I want to see that now because. I just I want to know if there was any bloopers where somebody just turned around and was like, "Hey, can you save us?" Like, so hey, the so like this kind of like maybe an off-screen conversation to have, but like the 
one of the main reasons they moved the wreckage from like one spot of the beach to another spot on the beach in the middle of the season okay. was because uh, planes that was right over a flight path and people would legitimately be freaking out on planes being like, there's a plane crash down there because they just left all oh that stuff God. on the beach. So that's part of why they moved it like way over there <laughs> to another spot that would not, you. but people, because it's just Hawaii and they can't like close, people are just like going on hikes and stuff they can't close down everything people would constantly just walk into set and see like a wrecked plane which uh i oh, they man. had Could you imagine that <laughs> there were so they ended up having to like uh i think have like 24 7 guards at some points and like in the first season before oh like God. as the seasons go on and they get more money they're able to like actual quarantine off an area and be like, nobody come in here. But in right, season right. one, people are just walking up and be like, oh my God, what's going on? And that would well, happen. I think walked up when it, after, you know, when they're filming the pilot or, or the first couple episodes and everything's on fire and stuff. And you're just like, wait a minute. Oh my God. Happened? What did I walk into? I didn't hear JJ Abrams, stop filming. Save these people. <laughs> oh, man. Is that. Is that Pippin? What's going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, part of the whole reason they m had that uh, storyline where they had to move down the beach was they literally had to move down the beach in real life. That's funny. No, I did. That's that makes sense though. That makes sense. You would think though they would have did like why didn't they use one of the smaller smaller islands? Uh, like they just needed space to like background and stuff. Like if you, yeah. like the, the volcano, uh, obviously in Lost, it's not a volcano, but like that massive hill and stuff is like such an iconic yeah. imagery that using a smaller island, I think you lose kind of the verticality and then getting to see it from the reverse shot of the raft later on where you see just how expansive it actually is you need a large island to do that oh no that's it yeah no i got you how big is do we know is there actual like in story dimensions for the island dude uh that is something i knew once i do not know that okay i don't have that gotcha. in front of me gotcha because uh, yeah I, I was thinking when you said um when they pull away with the raft, you do get a good shot, and it's it's huge. It is yeah. definitely a big island. So, and it's two of them technically, right? Right next to yeah. each other, it's two of them. Yeah, because Hydra Island's right over there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think that's all I've got. This is a good show. Loss is the first show so to talk about. To learn about man in this. Show. It is. It is. Because there's so many weird things happening at all all the time, all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's so much you fun. think, and we're not even into next week's trippy dream sequences that we get. Teresa falls up the stairs. Teresa falls down the stairs. Mm. Oh, the beachcraft, John. Wow. So that's next episode. Next episode, yeah. Uh, and also, okay. so I've talked about this a few times. I don't know if it's been on camera or just behind the scenes with you and Ben. This is also the episode uh, where they pull aside uh, Ian Summerholder and like, hey, we're going to kill your character. And he's like, I just bought a house. <laughs> Could you not Damn. kill me? Damn. And we don't, do we not get him again the rest of the first season? No, no, we get him like immediately. He's in uh, Shannon flashbacks. Um, okay, but like, okay. but like, everyone signed on to this expecting it to be like, you know, you oh. sign on to a show and it's like, and then it's the most successful show on television ever. It's like, yeah. Oh, we are, uh, I'm going to be here for a while. Oh yeah. Buying a house in Hawaii. We're killing your character. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be messed up, man. That would be really messed the up. The day he closed on his house, they told him. 
Oh, yeah, that would suck. And they're like, you should have told somebody that you were doing this. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, yeah, especially, too, you get a, sh a, a, sh a type of show where you're on an island, you would think, oh, if, I mean, if we get four or five seasons, I'm going to be on it. <laughs> Plus, I'll live in Hawaii. Right. Right. And uh, yeah, oh man, that would suck. Yeah, that would be horrible. Yeah. But we we got a lot of time to how eulogize. Many, how Boone. many extras? Oh yeah, how many actors and extras do you think do that though, man? Like they're like, oh, this is the one that's gonna give me everything. I have <laughs> to imagine <laughs> it's like twenty percent of actors have this story. Um, yes. Where they got that one rogue extra that's like this is the one is because I was in this 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 episode of this show, I am now going to be the biggest person in the world. I have to get well, there <laughs> for something like who, for something like Lost that films in Hawaii, mm -hmm. you gotta imagine, and I've never looked into this. They gotta use most of the same extras and stuff. It's not like they're in oh, L.A. Sure. and they can just like put out a call and be like. Hey, you, off the street, you want to be a star? It's like, there's yeah. only so many people in Hawaii. It's fair. And you got to commit no, to... Point. And they're shooting, like... There's a reason uh, Daniel Day Kim, Jorge Garcia, go from Lost to Hawaii Five O immediately. It's like, we have homes in Hawaii, and Hawaii is expensive. Uh, sure. We live here. So you gotta imagine they use a lot of the same extras over and over and over again. Oh, I would, yeah. I mean, I would assume that too. I would agree, especially for this first season too. I mean, I can't imagine they were just given a lot of money to just do whatever the heck they wanted with. So, no, I'm sure they had to have a certain amount of people that were like, "Look, you guys are the background. Like, you just walk around, do stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just randomly do stuff." I wish so much that the Nikki and Paulo actors were actually extras that they just promoted. Oh, well, that's a good yeah. But they're not. They might have been. No, they're no. not. Oh, okay. No, they, they, they were other been. actors. There's someone well, who we looks. Know Scott and Steve got promoted at least into the story. <laughs> they got promoted on accident, but not promoted. <laughs> you get one line where Scott introduces himself. And then even the writers can't be like, oh, what's that character? Is that Scott or Steve? Ah, let's just I again, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I love the the strength to not just say, All right, we can't kill Scott and Steve. Just one of them dies. Like, even if after death you're still making the mistake, it's like, well, I'll just kill the other one. It's fine. But I don't I think in canon, Scott doesn't die. Or wait. Steve doesn't die <laughs> until already, the already. I don't think Steve dies until the fire arrows in season five. Oh really? That he makes it that far. I think he 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 either dies there or he dies in the barracks when uh uh Kimi comes to try and abduct Ben. Mm. Oh, you know what? It is the barracks. Froger is who I'm thinking of in season five. Neil. Neil. Okay. I don't, yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. We got some good stuff. It sucks because I know I want to talk about it. Like I was like, oh, don't tell me about that. Remember <laughs> twenty yeah. minutes ago when we tried to end the episode? <laughs> yeah. it, was good, we, it was a good attempt. It was. It a was. Good attempt. <laughs> but you knew what you signed up for when you brought me on. Oh no, I really, I don't mind it, man. I, I really love talking about this show. So me it's, too. No, it's so much fun. Well, guys, that is our show. Um, again, please like and subscribe to the channel, guys. We are, are we are on our journey to a thousand subscribers. Um, and actually, I just checked today. We are close. We are at one eighty. Well, but we're close to two hundred now. So that's wow. a really good thing. Moving on up. Excited about it. Get yeah. get your mom's phone. Subscribe. She won't know how to how to unsubscribe. She'll never even see the notifications. Get your dad's phone, Mom, your sister's dad, phone. Brother, sister. Yep. All your dog. Accounts, just... Are you one of those hipsters who has a dog phone? Who has a phone for their dog? Get get 
your dog subscribed for quality content like this. What other quality content could they find on this network? Just don't hit the notification bell on their on theirs. <laughs> on yours, do it so you know. But them, just don't hit it. They'll never know. It'll what just a, be on there. <laughs> what a perfect segue I gave you, and you just said, nah. <laughs> I'm going to say, no, what? I got to finish my notifications. I, I said, what other quality programming can they find on this channel? <laughs> Oh shoot! Oh shoot! Right by me. Yep. Right by me. Uh, we have Jedi Academy. We have Weekly Geekdom. Gonna geek them uncut, and we also have this great show, guys, where we talk about Lost every week, and we have so much fun doing it. Um, something that Ben brought to the channel, and me and Dave have want to keep going and have been keeping going. So we will be here every week, guys. We're having so much fun. Uh, but yeah, come back and see us next week, Dave. Tell everybody where they can find you, man. You can find me on the Northern Entertainment Group every Tuesday on Have You Seen This, the show where we talk about TV. So we're going to be talking about Last of Us. I may talk about Bad Bad. Bad. Oh, how good is Last of Us right now, eh? Last of Us, man. Oh, I'm living by that show right now. So, so good. So good. Um, Have you watched C? Sorry, I, I hate to do this. Have you watched C on uh, Apple TV? I have not. I only... Oh! Man. That... I always think that show's called Sight. That's it. Yeah, that's good. That is oh, a really so... good show. Um, so good. So good. How good's Momoa? Yeah, sorry. I just I rewatched. Not... I just rewatched Dune last night with my wife. Like, oh, so good. So good. Can't Whoa. wait for part two, man. Oh, that's this Can't year, wait. right? Also, his name's Duncan yeah. Idaho. Like, pff, so good. That is funny. Yeah, um, he's good at that, though. He really is. Yeah, he is. And you know what I like about that? And I know this isn't the Dune show. I've already said where you can find me. Uh, but I like that Jason Momoa went to the guy and said, "Hey, I'm not gonna take my shirt off. Can I just like not get totally jacked out and look like a normal person?" And he's like, "Yeah." It's like he got like a little. He had like a little bit of the face, like a little pudge there. And I'm like, look at this guy, not on like. Uh, 50 pounds of creatine a day just like living right. life right <laughs> hey oh he's got that aquaman money he doesn't care anymore man. he don't care <laughs> he doesn't care anymore <laughs> and now he's gonna have that lobo money probably just oof, i know that we're not talking about that at yeah, all probably but yeah mm. oh my god i just sorry i clicked on what next week's episode is next week's the, also the kidney episode for john locke <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we are gonna have a lot of great stuff to talk about next week, but you know, in the meantime, that, you can that, check... is, that is. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. But in the meantime, <laughs> you can find me on uh, Northern Entertainment Group. We have a lot of other great, great shows. Similar. If you like what they're doing over here, you'll like what we're doing doing over there. Unless you only like Lost shows, no one else watches Lost. <laughs> Let's say, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I start a rewatch, but I start, you know, we do uh, chronologically lost on the other channel. Oh really? So you watch no. the flashbacks? Oh, have you never? This is something we could talk about off offline. But yeah, chronologically lost sure. is a thing. Wow. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Um, yeah, guys, you can find me though at uh, on Twitter at Jedi Master Talk. Um, look for me here on the Facebook group, also um, um, Multiverse of Geekdom and the Benverse face Facebook group. Um, yeah, guys, though, having so much fun talking about uh, Lost, and we will see you guys next week. Have a great evening. Bye.